We're talking today about the end times and about what God is shaking in this season. My brother, my sister, I know many, many seasons, many times, many decades, a lot of people would say, this is the end time, this is the end time. But you know, yes, but more and more and more and more, we will see the signs. More and more, we will get into that time where we as a church, the Church of Christ, will have to grow up and come into a certain positioning. And today I say, position yourself accurately in the end times. If you can write that down. And I just want to run over a few chapters that normally we were supposed to take 10 Sundays, but maybe just give you an overview. Please write down, um, even in your diary, even in your Bible, even on your phone. And uh, go and ask Holy Spirit, what must you do with all of this? What must you do with all of this? Okay, there we go. Watch out. Watch out for the deception. Watch out for the deception. Chapter 24, verse 4. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. Deception, my brother, my sister, will be the biggest temptation for you, the biggest challenge that will come against you. Not the fact that you cannot buy, not the 666, not the shaking, not the earthquakes, not the pestilence, not the wars, but the biggest thing that will come against you is deception. In this time, even look at the COVID, how many theories and conspiracy theories and this and that, Two decades ago, it wasn't possible. Now, in your hand, on a phone, you can hear a thousand opinions. You can go in a thousand opinions. You can go in hundreds of opinions in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in your hand, you can have hundreds of opinions about what is happening. What is this? What is that? This prophecy. That guy believes God showed him this. That guy believe, he believes God showed him that. And... How will you keep yourself from deception? Firstly, safe in his word, in his presence. Safe in his word, in his presence. To have a genuine simplicity in your walk with God. Simplicity. The child will enter the kingdom. When you come as a child, that means with a genuine simplicity dependent on God, you will enter the kingdom. That means today, tomorrow. It's not talking about one day when you die. Tomorrow, you will understand the gospel of the kingdom. The word is talking about the good news that will be preached. But that's a sermon on its own for another day. Do not remind me about the good news and then also the gospel of the kingdom. That has to do with understanding the authority of God coming in into your life, over your life, over your weakness, over the sin, over the, that what you think of doing. There's a gospel of the kingdom and there's the good news. It's not two different gospels, but certain focuses in it. Okay, let's go. You will hear about wars, rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilence, earthquakes. I think we can see that quite a lot today. Are you with me? Uh, are you still here? You are here of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. When everybody is at war with one another, when the earth is shaking with earthquakes and millions in danger, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, like COVID, earthquakes, you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. It's not the end yet. The end is still to come. But my brother, my sister, I want to pray, may there be earthquakes in our lives. Things must happen out there. And sometimes we must hear the Holy Spirit, because sometimes we pray against a, a famine around us, Pray against a shaking that's around us at our workplace, maybe in relationships, in things that are happening around us, and we pray against it. 
You need to hear the Holy Spirit. What must you pray against? And what must you pray? God, why is this thing happening? Why these earthquakes? Why these wars? Why this COVID thing? Why? Hello? Because maybe you mustn't pray against it. There we go. Some of the things must happen. Don't be alarmed. But sometimes we pray because we are alarmed. Even God says, don't be alarmed by it. There's wars up here. There's wars in here. The Bible says there's wars in our flesh. There's wars sometimes with people because of a war inside. But what are you going to do with this war? You're going to stand in the name of Jesus Christ. You must first get the war out of here. The war out of here. Are you with me? And sometimes it takes a war out there in situations and circumstances for us to get out to God and decide what is now really of value and what is not of value in my life. Will I entertain this war with somebody, these issues that I quickly can have with somebody? Will I entertain this thing of when I will give my heart, when not? When I will close my heart, when I will open my heart? And I have the right over my heart that belongs to him to position it as I please. When will I stop with all those games? Unfortunately, sometimes only when everything is shaken around me. May God help us that we will not be alarmed, but everything will work for the good, for those who love him, for the church that's growing up that will understand I'm driven by his love and not by a fear. Don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Okay, are you with me? It must happen. The end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. There will be earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of birth pains. And some say birth bangs. What a freaky English word. But it's really like that. That's the beginning of birth things. Now, what is that? That is an absolute crisis. When a lady is in a time to give birth, it's an absolute crisis when this birth pain starts. Not at all. When all the shaking happens, you're supposed to have a, to start an amazing, exciting expectation. You're supposed to become excited. Are you with me? The husband normally more than the wife, I don't know, at that moment. But why? It's the beginning of something that's going to be excellent, that's going to be birthed. The church of Christ in victory. The bride of Christ that will rise up in the nations like never, 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 never before. For the fulfillment of major prophecies that even Jesus said. And in those days, even greater works than what I've done, you will do. Are you with me? So when you see all these things, let's honor that. Let's just talk about all the things happening. Or position yourself in the end times in a place where you are excited with an expectation. Maranatha, Jesus is coming. But Jesus is coming tomorrow. More of him, less of me tomorrow. More of him, less of me next week. How are you planning that? How do you plan that there will be more of him and less of you? Or is he the what's the two over stuffy? Two over stuffy. What is a two over stuffy? What's good? Magic wand, something like that. That thing. Just to help you through this and to help you through this. And I have a testimony. He helped me through this and he helped me through that. Yes, that's good as a child of God. But as you grow as a son of God and you rise up, you come into this place that you can see through the earthquakes, through the pestilence, through the wars, through everything that will be shaken. Shaken. Because you have an expectation as the true bride of Christ, you have an expectation as the church becoming mature. You have an expectation to understand the kingdom mentality. Child of God, not in the kingdom. Child of God that will enter the kingdom as a child. And then start to inherit the kingdom. 
two or three different things, but another day. Beginning of the birth banks. And we're just going to run through it. Then we are encouraged, Jesus says, uh, there will be tribulation, death, and hate for his name's sake. There is no rapture in that place. I'm very sorry. If you believe in the pre, okay, if you go, uh, okay, enjoy, greetings. But according to the word, Jesus is here speaking to the disciples. He's speaking to the church. He doesn't say, you'll be gone, and this will happen while you are gone. He says, you, you. Are you with me? Oh, somebody say yes or amen. Then you, not when you are gone, then you will be handed over to be persecuted. Yay. To be put to death. Yay. And you will be hated by all nations. Yay. Because of me, Jesus Christ. You will stand out and the proof is in the pudding. You will so stand out for me. I believe you. I will work in you. That you will so stand out in the midst of evil. That they will hate you. They will see you. They will identify you. As how you walk with me. That's what God is saying. He has such faith in you. That hell will be angry at you. For how you stand in the name of Jesus. Like we said in the past, guys, you can use the name of Jesus in school, especially at this stage of many other nations. Praise God. Yeah, there's a lot of things that's going to happen through Africa in, re in re evangelizing Europe and America and all those places. It's going to happen again. We, we're not going to judge them. The gospel came from there to here. And you know, when you, we're going to reach more and more and more of the Sutu and Zulu guys and the guys in Africa. That rubbish that people said, no, it was a white religion that came here from Europe. Uh, absolute, absolute rubbish. Before the whiteies came here with the gospel and made a mess with a lot of things that they had to show, there was a revival in the book of Acts. And when they're in the midst of all the success and the power of God moving and all the stuff happening, God told the leader of the revival, stop, Philip, you go this separate road alone. Because I need the gospel to go to Africa. You stop and you will go this lonely road and you're going to explain to that man from Ethiopia my word. So that my word will go to Africa. In a supernatural way. And when he's finished, he just took Philippus transport. Eh? And he was seen in a different city. But it was so important for Jesus to bring that word to Africa. That he interrupted the whole revival. <laughs> Hello. Remember just that one. I don't know why I said that, but okay. Tribulation. Tribulation is, uh, is like with fire. Fire. Oh, fire is very bad for the gold. No, sorry. It's, it's bad for uh, the rubbish. So the, the, the fire of tribulation is to get the rubbish out, to get your motives right, for you to grow up and for you to stand out. To stand out. Are you with me? So that's where many people in the past they say, are you in or are you out? So tribulation is, are you in or are you out? It's in or out. And God wants that mature child of God. More and more. The end time church, more and more. It will be a thing of in or out. Where I cannot just wara wara with the gospel. Wara wara with the religion. Wara wara with the word. God is coming back for a mature, pure, excellent bride. Amen. But unfortunately, fire for the gold. Death. Death, where is your sting? In the past, death can be feared. But if you're walking with Christ, when your life is Christ, then die is gain. And not just the day when you pass through. When somebody died, what happened? He went from glory to awesome, perfect glory. A trillionth of a light year is over in his life. And he's running into fullness. Are you with me? Death cannot bind you. Death has no sting. It has no authority over you. Because life is in you. Christ 
when Christ's eternal life is in you, then death is a servant to get your flesh out. So the death of my flesh, the death of my fear, the death of my anxiety today is gain tomorrow. Because tomorrow there will be more of Christ. Death must work for you. Are you with me? Death hates. If they don't hate you, if they have friendship with the world, is enemy with God. How do you say that in English? Enmity. Where is my English today? It's enmity with God. So you will so stand out that they will not be able to. They would, they would say, ah, ah. And you don't know why they have this issue with you. Be encouraged because you're starting to stand out. I'm not talking about a guy in a demon of religion judging others and just talking down to others. And I'm not talking about that. No, we must get that rubbish out of our own lives. And that is where there must be a wall that must be settled. There must be earthquakes in here that must be dealt with. Hello. It must be exposed. What is pestilence that must be dealt with, if I can say like that? Are you with me? There must be drought on your rubbish, on the flesh. Drought in the area where you want to, want to gossip, where you want to talk bad, where you want to just come with the spirit of criticism. You must bring a drought in those areas that you nearly... And when you are dealing with that, you will see, you will find a hunger to judge. Then you know you're starting to win. <laughs> you must let it dry out. Are you with me? Because then you're starting to win. If it's just flowing, flowing, flowing. But if you feel this hunger to, to become bitter, to, to have a, this issue, to have this fight, to have this justification, mm -mm. just know you are starting to win. Hunger it out until it dies. Okay? So that thing in your life can throw a tantrum when you come against it. It will not just say, oh, I submit. You say, hey, guys. We were friends yesterday, me, you and lust, we were friends. Yesterday, we and pornography, we were friends. Yesterday, we and this fear and anxiety and depression and negativity, we were friends. Hey, 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 you're not going to get rid of me like this, buddy. Are you with me? So suddenly, there's certain wars because you decided certain things will not be friends anymore. Deal with that. Deal with that. Why? Because you have an expectation of something excellent is coming. It's the beginning of birth pangs. So don't focus on the external. Understand what is happening in the church and in your heart with excitement. Okay, we are there. Next one. Offense taken. Time to take offense. Hatred, betrayal, deceiving one another. Love will grow cold. Where is that? All in the church. They say thousands and even millions of people are walking out of church in the world, statistics. I say, okay, it's the devil having his chance. It's the ball prophets having their chance. But they don't know what's coming. Amen. Okay, three people. Amen. Who the Elijahs that will rise up in the end time. That will bring the hearts of the fathers to the children. But in essence, to bring the heart of the father to the children. And the heart of the children to the father. Through a stature, through this man, that could bring down the fire of God. And it will come. It will come. But people will take offense. This one, I will, you know, I didn't greet you nicely. And the guy take offense. Oh, I said something that he had to do. And I said, stop this, go and do that. Oh, 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 forget about doing this for the Lord anymore. For doing, forget about doing this with God. Forget about everything just out. May God help us to grow up. Amen. That you will not take offense. You will not take offense in Jesus' name. Amen. Hatred against one another. Betraying, deceiving one another by believing rubbish. When I start to speak about Leander, let's say he wasn't so holy as he think he is. Okay. And uh, let's say, and I'm speaking to David about Leander, and I have, yuck, that guy is absolutely arrogant, and this and this and this and this. 
What am I doing? This is part of, of end time rubbish from hell. I'm an instrument from hell to deceive him about him so that he can start to judge him. Oh, you come as the deceiver. There's, I thought there's one deceiver. That's the devil. But he has some people that can help him in his job so that he can sit back and eat the popcorn, watch the movie, that you will do his job for him. That you will deceive the brother in how you speak to him about that guy so that there's something in his heart starting to come, a question mark about that brother. No, I'm just sharing my heart with you. Be careful what you do. More and more in the end time, people, they will deceive one another. No. Love will grow cold. Love for one another. What will there be? The most freaky love that you can find. Selfish love. And, and a, a thing that's called love, but it's actually lust. Selfish love. I will love when I'm loved. I, I love according to what my body tells me how I will love. But there's a love that is called God. And God, the passion of God in me, that love to give to you, you to give to me, give one another, that must drive us. Are you with me? God's going to help us. That's going to happen more and more. Next one. Salvation in, in perseverance. Matthew 24, 13. Please mark it. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. The one who stands firm. Stands firm when everything is shaken. Stands firm. How can that be? Only if you build on the word of God. Only if this is part of your life, you will stand till the end. How will you not be deceived? The biggest temptation that the devil can come to Jesus with is word. Okay. And then Jesus bring context. The word says, and Jesus says, the word also says. The word also says. The word also. Hello? Yes, you have a day with. Enjoy spending time with the word. Amen. Amen. So to get into the word, to have the wisdom, how will you stand firm? You cannot just say, I will stand firm. I will stand in faith. Rubbish. You cannot just decide to stand firm and stand in faith. Rubbish. Because faith comes from the word. And only if you make a decision to get into the word will you stand in faith. So decide to get into the word and you will stand in faith. Are you with me? I decide to go to Joburg, but you never decide to get into the car. What a freaky, what a freaky, freaky situation. You decide to get into the car that you know before the time it is promised that this car is going to Joburg. So the only decision to be made is to get into the car. Because the car already, it said that the car is going to Joburg. So you get into the word because it's already said when you get into the word, faith will rise up in you. The word will cause through the spirit that faith will rise up in you. And you will stand when you get into the word. Context. Deceive. Again, to be standing against the deceiver is you know the word. You know the word. Start to study the word. And when you get irritated with the word because you have enough now of the word, then you, that's the moment when you must carry on into the word. That's the only thing how you will stand and for your children and how you must teach them will stand against the deceiver in the end time. Even more and more as we will see it. Salvation. Salvation to be saved from the rubbish of tomorrow. This is not just eternal salvation that you will miss hell. That salvation is not just missing hell. But tomorrow you will be saved from the temptation from the devil. Saved from the circumstance. Saved from that what people are going to do to you. Saved from the bitterness, the negativity, the depression that can come upon you. You are safe against that when you get into the word and you stand. Amen. Next one. Proclaim the gospel of the kingdom in the whole world as a testimony. That's the next verse. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Then the end will come. Not when everything is shaken. 
everything is shaken because birth bangs for that what is excellent is happening and then the church will rise up the mature church that is not afraid of anything not intimidated not com compromising in any area but the church will rise up open their mouths and stand in the name of christ and speak the gospel then you will not be afraid and you call it professional etiquette when you cannot speak at your workplace about jesus like we said curse the name of jesus use it as a swear word you're okay have respect for his name and say that you love him in the school then you're in trouble how on earth can that happen oh it's the beginning of birth pains for something excellent 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 that god is going to do that's what's happening but may you have the grace to rise up in the name of jesus and get the compromising of tomorrow and yesterday out of your life because tomorrow he can crush you and he's not gonna in jesus name gospel of the kingdom okay we go next one then the end will come yes next one pray and flee in tribulation that's a whole area that's a whole sunday on its own matthew 24 verse 15 to 22 pray and flee in tribulation they will be tribulation once again you will not miss it i'm very sorry you will not go before the time um jesus is speaking to these guys and how these guys will go through all these things and he's speaking to the church because we will be purified as gold are you with me so bottom line in this you will flee because two will be on the on the on the roof don't even go back into the house this will happen there what's going to happen we're going to be filled with fear no 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 just understand concept go and make a study about flee near flee of what's that a clean dingy floy flee in the bible many times it's not connected first of all with fear when uh, paul says to timothy man of god man of god flee this rubbish all this lust and all this rubbish and yeah what's that pursue chase after chase after pursue righteousness love all these excellent qualities run for that run for that so in the running for that i'm fleeing this because you are so afraid of the rubbish no not flee because of fear and in that same context a lot of rubbish can happen but flee out of it as you run into his will as you run into his love you are fleeing from fear because the love drives out the fear as you run into peace the peace will deal with the anxiety as you run into the joy of the lord it will deal with that totally despondency and that you feel you have no strength because the joy of the lord is your strength amen amen so more and more in the end time you need to flee and rush and haste yourself out of that what is not from god that you what is not from god is going to destroy you flee from that place Many times in the Old Testament also the prophet said, flee from that place. There's the Zechariah 2. He says, flee from the north land and come. Who touch you, I've touched the apple of my eye. Around you there's a wall of fire. Come, see. Come and rejoice. For behold, I'm coming. I will make my home with you. I will dwell in your midst. This is what God's going to do. But before that, before that, flee from this put an effort in to get out of the rubbish to get out of the fear to get out of the self-justification to get out of that things it's going to destroy you tomorrow flee from it as you pursue righteousness etc et you you're with me are you with me okay they will say there's a whole Four, four verses they will say this they will say that do not believe them do not believe them oh okay how can you say do not believe them? who are they talking about the deception explaining jesus is explaining the deception to you that there will be many people and this is where they will come in the name of the lord 
There's a lot of guys that take these scriptures, but they are in such a spirit of judgment, and as if they are the only ones right in the whole world, is, is totally deceived. No, we're not talking about that super spiritual demonic religion. No, but you, in, when you hear that, you need to say, God, I need to walk in humility and dependency on you, and I want to jump in this word to understand context. To understand context. That the word says, but the word also says. But the word also says. And the word also says. And the fact that Jesus could say, the word also says. The deceiver in the Garden of Eden, let us discuss it. Let's discuss the whole thing of what Jesus, what God said. And when the snake could deceive Eve, then the platform was set. The platform was set for the enemy to win in your life. Let it not be so. Okay, next one. Be ready because no one knows the day or the hour except the Father. Be ready. Be ready. What does that mean? Tomorrow he can come. Yes. He can come. But be ready even tomorrow when Jesus wants to come into your situation. Well, are you not going to be ready? You're going to be so busy with yourself, so busy with your opportunity, that you're excited about the opportunity, or, or you are so intimidated by this situation, that you don't understand that tomorrow at a time that you don't expect it, you just want to walk into the room and give you wisdom. You just want to walk into the room and give you a breakthrough. But will you see that? But will you see that? That is part of being ready. Get into the Word. And you will recognize the voice. You will recognize the voice if you understand the word. Let's say, I need to know the word to recognize the voice. Otherwise, you will just hear. But if you know Chinese, you will understand, oh, there's somebody speaking Chinese and he is saying the following. Are you with me? But not to be deceived, you need to recognize what is false. What is false, like Antichrist, and what is from him. But come to know the language and you will recognize the voice. I stand at the door, at the door and I knock. Revelation at the church. And God will knock at your door. Yes, he's in your life. But he will knock at your door because he wants to have important meetings with you. And sometimes just to have fellowship with you. He will stand at the door and he will knock. And when you hear his knocking. No. When you hear his voice. Where? On the other side of the door. While the door is still closed. When there's still things in your life where you, you, the door can be closed. Even though the door are closed. It's closed. You can recognize his voice, that it is him speaking. And then you open the door. But many times we just open doors when we hear a knock. We think, hey, maybe this is a good opportunity. God will teach you. God will teach us so that we all understand. You don't just open the door. No, no. Only... God knows the day, the day. But you say no when they say this. When they say, here is the Christ. What are we talking about? Tomorrow they say, this is from the Lord. That is from the Lord. This is from the Lord. Then you're supposed to have it in you to understand when to say no, 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 no. That is not from God. Grow up, child of God. Grow up. Otherwise, the shaking will just run over you. Oh, you will go to heaven, but you will miss what God had for you on earth. Let's not do that by His grace. Heaven and earth will pass away, but His word will never, never pass away. That's also a whole section. So what does it mean? You need to be found in the word. The word must be found in you. The word of God must dwell richly in you, must be alive in you. You must... Jump into the word, the word in you. And then when heaven and earth is shaken and is passing away, what is in you will not pass away. Because on earth as it is in heaven, the dream that God has in heaven for Bluefontein, it will become a reality. The dream that God has for your marriage, for your family, for that what are you, you are busy with, that dream will become a reality. But then it's the end of that facet of heaven. Because the dream is now Finished. It became a reality on 
earth. So the whole concept of heaven and earth, let it be on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Because heaven came down in Jesus Christ. But be careful. There's people that go whole really wacko with that as a teaching. But what are we saying? In your business, in your city, in your relationship, Jesus, and what he, Father, he's dreamt about you must come down. It will come down. And it will sometimes come down in an hour that you never expected it. But when you stand, you find yourself in the word, my brother, my sister, you will not be shaken. Things around you will be shaken. But you will say, praise God for the shaking, so that I can tomorrow see, what did I build wrong when the shaking came? Oh man, the shaking came and there's hundreds and there's thousands of buildings gone and there's thousands of people dead there in Turkey and, and Syria. But there's certain buildings that are still standing that had the same shaking as the building next to it. Man, your building can be shaken and many people can perish and many people can get hurt. When you build a life with people around you and with you and you don't build it accurately on the word of God. Position yourself accurately with the word. Amen. Because the shaking is coming more and more and more. Okay, there we go. The sign of the Son of Man's coming will be visible. That's uh, for another day. But you need to know that it will be visible. You don't know the time, but when he's coming, he's there. You will understand and you will see. How it happens, I don't know. Just a personal note. Because the earth is round. So if Jesus is coming on this side of the earth, at the same moment, these guys must see also. So I don't know. Anybody a possibility? The, uh, the mountain will split. Uh, Olive Mountain will split. But I don't know if it will split and the earth become like that. I don't know. But it will be interesting to see how that's going to happen. Hey. Okay. Next one. Position yourself now. Tell your neighbor, position yourself now. So after Jesus spoke about all these facets, after Jesus spoke about all these facets, there's three parables. Thank you, guys. There's three parables that he uses to explain how you need to position yourself now. Let's go for it. First one. Okay, it's time, wealth, and people. You have time. And too many times, you write it down there at the back also, thank you. Time, wealth, and people. Time, many times, is seen as the excuse. I don't have time. Anybody uh, heard that? Wealth and people. Now, first of all, time. It's an opportunity. It's a gift. It's an opportunity given by God for you today. Today. You have time on earth to do what you can never do in heaven. And that is to worship him in spite of your circumstance. To walk by faith. You cannot walk by faith in heaven because faith is uh, assurance of things that you cannot see. There you will see everything face to face, everything face to face. But you can please him through faith only in your time on earth. There's a way that you can walk with God. There's a way that you can honor him. There's a way that you can worship him. There's a way that you can love him. There's a way that you can respond to him that you will never ever be able to do in heaven. You have this time. You have this opportunity that God has given you. And he's consumed with that. And he has faith that you will use every opportunity in the right way. And that time will not be your excuse. Time for what you have see as your priority for that you'll have time you just go through the motions i have a job i mustn't be in trouble go through that but what a foolish guy that will just go through the motions instead of asking our god what is the opportunity that i have today opportunity to worship you in spirit and truth wonderful i got the scripture so that day um here comes uh here comes v uh, franzel and he irritates you and he frustrates you. And you feel like slaughtering him. But the Lord said the morning that uh, he will give you opportunity to worship the Lord in, worship, in spirit and truth. That was your opportunity. To go beyond that. And at that stage to say, God, I love you. doesn't matter what. I will worship you. Please, Lord, just fire on him. No. Lord... I worship you in spite of no fire on him. 
And even if you just bless him today, even though he's in the wrong, it's also okay, Lord. I will worship you in spirit and truth. And sometimes the prayer are answered in such a way. By something, somebody coming and just totally frustrate you. So that you have the opportunity to say, in spite of, still I will worship you. Hmm. Okay, time. Then, the second one, wealth. You have a wealth. Everybody has wealth. And the biggest riches is this, the wealth. You have wealth. If you think you don't have wealth, they just understand. You don't understand contentment. Contentment is, when I have God, I have everything. I have wealth. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because in Him, I find the source of everything. In Him. Not super spiritual. In Him, I find wealth. In Him, I find you are blessed with all blessings in heaven. Through Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. And if you don't understand that, that you come from a place of wealth, that you have the riches of heaven in you, then what you're going to do with your work, in your work, you're going to work to try to get wealth. And that's a wrong perspective. What are you doing with the wealth God is giving you? The wealth is, yes, in money, in, in a bed, in a house, in a car, in the word, in the wisdom, in people around you, in grace over your life. Go and make a list of all that, that you can call wealth. And then people. Position yourself now. You need to position yourself correctly with people. Otherwise, you're going to destroy them or they're going to destroy you. You're going to say, I'm now fed up with people. I'm not a people person, a rubbish. Um, the ones that's living in you died for people. And he has a passion for people. And if you are crucified with Christ and he is living through you, you will have a passion for people. But let's decide. I will honor my personality or I will honor the Christ living in you. People, position yourself right, accurately. All right, there we go. Wait, work, walk. Everybody, wait, work, walk. Okay. Time. Time. Many times we are just in a hurry. We are just in a hurry. There is no time. Because there is no priority for what I'm going through now. There is a waiting. And wait is in the context of time. God gives you opportunity how to wait. Because when you wait, I say, I will tell you, I give this time because it's priority. Priority is I will wait on God. Not necessarily wait for an answer. Not necessarily wait until the circumstances change. I will wait on Him that is the priority in my life. God is priority in my life. My relationship with God is priority. What does that mean? I will take the word and I will have time with God. Are you with me? Wait on God. He's getting also into His word. Not just sit there pathetically if I can say that. But to get into his word with the spirit of God. Amen. Your work. You work with the wealth that God has given you. You work with the wealth and you walk with people. Well, I'm going to use the, the three examples in the next three chapters after Jesus spoke about all the shaking. Everything is going to happen and it, it looks like really nach. It looks like really everything disastrous of what's happening on earth. He just uses these, these three examples. And the first one is about the ten virgins. The ten virgins. And the virgin with wisdom and the foolish guy. The foolish virgin. A virgin that is setting, you are setting yourself aside for God. But you are foolish in your ways. Because you don't understand time. And the time was, I had to get oil in a time when it was not necessary. Everybody, not necessary. It's not necessary now. So why will you make time for it if it's not necessary? Because you're a wise virgin. And the oil is about the Holy Spirit. So now you're going, when it's not necessary, to have time with the Holy Spirit. But you know when you're with the Holy Spirit... If you want him to speak, you better get into the Word. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to speak out of his own. 
The Holy Spirit will only speak the Word of God and explain the Word of God to you. So there's no time with Holy Spirit without the Word. If you want Him to speak. So wise virgin, if you're not foolish, you're saying you're giving yourself to God, but you live a foolish life and you miss the opportunity. When you come there, the door is closed. Jesus, I don't know you today. I don't know you in this opportunity. Tomorrow, when the opportunity is there, where the master is, you're going to be there. Where the master is, you're going to be there. Because you had the wisdom to sit with Holy Spirit and the Word, where you started to come to become accurate and sensitive to the Spirit and the voice of God. The voice of God and the Spirit. You started to become accurate with that. And when God is there in that opportunity, you are there. You are there. When He opens the door, you are there. You're going through the opportunity with Him. Not standing there at the door and in the name of Jesus, the devil closed the door, but it was actually Jesus that closed the door. And you missed the opportunity. You were foolish in that day. But praise God for grace. Praise God for grace through the blood of Christ. That the next day, I can repent, I can get into the Word with the Spirit, so that the following day, I can be a wise builder, I can be a wise virgin. Are you, are you with me? That's your waiting. That waiting is, I will not take time to do that. If it's not God going with me into that. God, we are not going to Canaan if you're not coming with us, Moses said on the mountain to God. When he said, I am opening the door for you. I will bless you going to Canaan, but I'm not coming with. And, uh, and uh, Moses said, God, then we're not going with all respect. Sorry, sir, we're not going if you're not going. <laughs> then we stay here in the desert till we die. Walk. You walk with people. There's no walk that you have on your own. It's not you and the Lord and that's it. No. Jesus died for a people. He didn't die for a person. He died for a people because the people must become the home of God. The people, the nations will become the home, not the person. The person is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in you with an agenda so that you as a living stone are mysled in, in gemessel, or that you are built in, that you are built in in a spiritual house for a specific purpose. Are you with me? So that we become the home of God collectively where he will dwell among the nations, and that will be his definition of heaven, according to Revelation. But your walk, when you walk alone, you are called a, a prodigal son or a naughty sheep. What did we die for Lord's cup? The lost sheep. Yeah. The lost sheep. You are lost. But you're still a sheep. You're not a goat. You're not going to hell. But you are lost tomorrow in your walk. You are lost in where God wants to guide you. Where he now must stop all 99. Stop. First to go and get you and put you in line. That you understand that you are walking with a group. You are walking in a group of sheep. But go and do on your own what you want to do. And Jesus must stop the whole train. And the... The flock ne? of sheep. To get you out of that place, for you to understand you are walking with people. You say you are following the shepherd, then you are walking with people. Then you are walking with people. And that's the, the second one about the work. is about the one, the two, and the five talents. The one, the two, and the five talents. That was about business. In your work, you must understand the wealth that God has given you. That's the two, one, two, and five talent guys. The walk with the people. Jesus came in. It was now either the goats or the sheep. And he said, I was. I was hungry. You didn't feed me. I was thirsty. You didn't give me something to drink. I was in jail. Lord, where were you in jail? For as long as, as far as you've done it to the least of these who? Brethren and sisteren. As long as you've done it to the, that brother and that sister then you've done it to me. Oh, not just the world out there, but if you've done it to the brother and the sister, then you've done it to me. God puts a priority with your spiritual family. God puts a priority with your spiritual family. Oh, how am I going to visit? Who? Anybody in the church that's in jail today? 
quite a few sitting here in a jail of depression, in a jail of lust, in a jail of pornography, in a jail of negativity, in a jail of religious confusion, in a jail of, of pride. And you must go and visit that guy in that jail of depression. And when you go into that place, Jesus will be there and he will open the door out of depression for that guy to get out of his jail. Oh, come on, man. Next to you is sitting somebody, but he's hungry, he's hungry, he's hungry. But tomorrow you need to encourage him, send him a word, if you're sensitive in the spirit. If you're sensitive in the spirit. And you will minister, and he's hungry. And Jesus identify with that person. Because he hungers for a relationship with that person. You give him a word. You give that guy a word so that he's encouraged to take up his relationship with Jesus. When you've done it to him, you've done it to me. Because if he's fed with the word, he's going to reach out to me and we're going to have an excellent relationship. When that guy's out of jail, I can walk with him and we can do life together, Jesus says. So when you've done it, you got that guy out of jail of negativity and judgment and religious rubbish. You've done it to me. You've done it for me. Because now I... I'm going to walk with this man and we're going to have an excellent life. Okay. People in your work and in your walk and in your waiting. Guys, this is for guys that are not foolish, not stupid. As the church that will rise. I'm telling you this prophetically. Next one. Wisdom, faithfulness, love. You write that down. Wisdom, that's for the first one. We said that all right already. Only wisdom will bring you into the place to know what to do with your time. Otherwise, time will always be an excuse. You will waste your time. You will use your time not accurately. But you need the wisdom of God to understand your timing of things. You need the wisdom of God. Wisdom is practical application. Solomon had the wisdom. He could understand how to bring practical application into situations that were many times challenging. God's wisdom will be there for you, that you will know practical application as God would have done it so that you can do it like that. Are you with me? If you lack wisdom, James 1 says, pray and God will give you. Pray and God will give you. But wisdom, so that you know what to do with your time, your opportunity this afternoon. Wisdom, so that today... You will not just wara wara and sleep in, in, in when we are coming together as a church. This is not a church, that's a building. Uh, you with me? What's the key word with a guy with the one talent, two talent, five talents? Faithfulness in your work. You're going to be faithful tomorrow in your work. Not just when the pastor look at you. Hey, man, I had power in my eyes some stage. Sometimes. You know? Not one of these guys or students, but other students that were here. Stand. And my eyes go there. They just have the strength to work. And they work. They're in the garden. And my eyes go away. And they stand. The power of the eyes of the pastor. And when the, I look there, then they work. I look away, they stand. <laughs> Anybody, any father or mother saw that the power of your eyes with your child, you know? <laughs> okay. Just with three. But... Uh, Bottom line, oh, come on, man. Faithfulness is when nobody sees you. It's an in thing in here. And the guy with the one telling, you're a heart master. You reap where you haven't sown. So everything, I didn't steal anything. Here's all your money back. Leader said, you are right. The guy with the one telling is right. The leader is wrong. Aha, uh -huh. the leader is wrong. The guy is right. But the guy that was right lost everything. Standing at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil with a snake. It's not about, not about right and wrong, like we said many times. Uh, you have one right, die and go to hell. So please don't stand on your right. Stand in Christ as your righteousness. In the place of grace. Amen. Amen. Faithfulness. Because you do what you do in your work as if unto the Lord. I will do the work with the wealth of his word, the wealth of his guidance, the wealth of what he gives me, the wealth of circumstances, the wealth that in everything that will, will work for the good. 
So I can do my work. There's no excuse. And I will be faithful in what God has given you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow at your workplace. You're going to do it for the Lord. Amen. Last one, love. Okay. Love. Okay. The love is all about what? <sighs> love among one another. They will know we are his disciples. Not because you are very smart. Not because you know the Bible just. No, because you have love for one another. God is a God of relationship. God is a family God. He's a family God. He's a father not to a person. He's a father to a family. They say God is a father to a family. And in the family, the father wants to come and dwell. Amen. So in that place, love. You have everything. You can give your body to be burned. You know, 1 Corinthians 13. You can have all this. You can have all the spiritual gifts. You can do the most amazing things. See the angels and do all that stuff. If there's no love, nothing. You're just making a rubbish noise. And that's all. So may God help you. To understand. Okay, let's finish off rather. All right, let's go for it. Last three. Wisdom in your waiting with the Holy Spirit. Wise virgin, please have wisdom in your waiting with the Holy Spirit. You don't wait. You don't wait without the Spirit and the Word. And the Holy Spirit is about the oil. Hey, hello. They waited, all of them waited. The, ten, the five foolish ones also waited. They, also, they didn't walk away. You can also wait for God to do something tomorrow. But wait without the Holy Spirit and the Word and you're full. We will not be fools anymore in Jesus' name. Through the blood of Christ. We will wait with the Holy Spirit and with the Word. And because we will spend time in the Word when it is not needed to spend time time in the word because this is not my, my ATM because I'm not a fool but a wise version I will spend time in the word and time with the spirit when it's not needed wisdom in your waiting with the Holy Spirit second one and this is all about the end time guys this is all about the shakings in the world faithful in your working with wealth let's say that faithful in my working with wealth you don't work for wealth. You work because you have the wealth. Everything in Christ Jesus. And from that attitude, that perspective, that way of thinking, from that place you work and you go and do what you need to do. In Him you have everything and your cup overflows. But you will not know it if you don't have time with the Word and time with the Spirit. You will not know it. You will not understand that. It's impossible. But you will be faithful in your working with the wealth that God has given you. And the last one, you will value, there will be value and there will be worth in your walk with people. I want to, the other word is substance. You understand what I'm saying? There's value in your relationship. There's substance. There's depth. There's worth. And that is what God wants you to have. But not first of all that the people must perform to win your favor. They must perform before you will give, because you'll not throw your pearls before the swine. Um, wrong context, the wrong manipulation of that scripture. Be careful with that. But bring value in your relationship as you walk with people. As you walk with people, bring value, bring worth, bring quality. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come and you guide us. Oh, Lord. In a time, as we see out there even, in a lot of shakings. A lot of shakings, Lord. A lot of shakings. First of all, our oh God, please have mercy on these guys throwing, going through all these earthquakes and famine and pestilence and wars and rumors of wars. God, all those stuff, please help them. But have mercy on us to see also how to deal with the wars and, and the, the things in our lives, Lord, even where we hunger ourselves out for your word and we don't feed ourselves really with your word forgive us for that lord help us to see now to understand how to position ourselves in prayer and to flee from that what will destroy us that we will flee from that what will destroy us and pursue 
as a company sitting here, Lord, that we choose to pursue that what is from you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Help us. Guide us in all of this, Lord. Help us to have the guts to grow up, to become mature, so that we will spread the gospel of the kingdom. That we will come with authority, not to condemn people, but to show them the authority of Christ. And that Christ, you will have the final say in the midst of chaos. When the world will sit with no answers and people will be deceived. God, have mercy on us that we must come with truth. And that when we open our mouth, the authority of truth will be there. We trust you for each man, every, each woman in this place. So it will be that they will first take the truth, that they are loved by you. That you want this awesome, intimate relationship with each one here, Lord. That you rejoice over with them with singing. That you will know that you inside of them are so much greater and stronger than the enemy in the world. Help each one of us. Give a hunger for the word, Lord. By your mercy and grace, give us the, the wisdom to spend time with you and your word so that we can get out of our foolish ways today as we repent of only coming many times to you when we need you. Thank you, God, for your grace, but help us all, please, Lord. We thank you for that. You will come and do it, Lord, that we will stand as wise virgins, as faithful servants with our talents, that there will be multiplication. Two will become four. Five will become ten. That there will be multiplication of the wealth that you have given us. Multiplication of the word in our, our lives. Multiplication of the gold and the opportunity and the grace over our lives, Lord. Let there be multiplication as you bring a faithfulness in our lives, Lord. Please. Please, Lord. May God help us to see how to walk with people. Forgive us for sometimes so easily having issues with people. Not sometimes so more honoring our personality than honoring you in our lives, Lord. God, help us and train us how to walk as a flock of sheep, Lord. God, that we will not just do our own thing and become super spiritual and walk in our own ways. Thank you, Lord, that you set us free to come into the place to be amazed, amazed, amazed at what you're going to do in a season as this. God, as you have called us for a season as this. Thank you, Lord. Help us not to be sitting back in our palaces like Esther could have that temptation, but like Esther that said, I will give my life, pray for me. That we will be willing to lay down our lives, even into death. We pray that in Jesus' name, and all say, Amen, Amen. Let it be so.